Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to Understanding Construction Drawings. In this series, we're going to learn about print reading. How do we read and interpret construction drawings? If you're interested in construction, project management, or any area within that from the trades, other areas, please subscribe to my channel and click notifications so you'll see as new videos come up in this series. So, as I mentioned, today we're going to be diving into a site plan. Now, this particular site plan is one that I actually used in my book uh, called Understanding Construction Drawings for Housing and Small Buildings. Uh, this particular model, and this is available on Amazon, uh, this particular model of house is a corner lot house. So in video number one or lesson number one in this series, and you can check my playlists if you want to go back and look at uh, the previous videos or click notifications for upcoming videos. Uh, the previous video we looked at the Doncaster drawing, which was actually a model house that was just down the street from this. Now, a site plan is taken from a legal survey and it shows where the building is going to go on the particular property. So it positions it or sites it on the particular property. So it should show where the, basically the property boundaries are. It should show setback amounts. Setback is how far is the building set back from the property line. And it should provide information about finished grading. And finished grading is designed so that water will run away from the buildings and it will be directed towards some sort of drainage system. Uh, it may be directed towards swales, which are indentures in the ground that are directing the water away from the building, which will either eventually bring it to a tributary, a river, or it may bring it into a storm sewer on the street or somewhere else that it's been located to gather that water and redirect it away from the area. If they don't do that, then what typically would happen is you'd have un unpredictable accumulations of water that would form and perhaps flood out neighborhoods that previously were fine before you started building this subdivision of multiple houses. So we always want to be cognizant of that and each city and town will have particular, particular zoning requirements that revolve around ensuring that the grading is going to be done properly, certain code requirements that ensures that uh, certain safety uh, minimum requirements are being met. All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'll zoom in, in a, again in a few seconds, but uh, to zoom out, you'll typically have like a site plan. Now it could be on, you know, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a condominium development, it's going to be on much bigger sheets of paper. A typical size like for a house might be 11 by 17. That's only because it's easier, easy to reproduce if you're printing it. To be honest, I prefer the digital. My eyesight's not as good as it used to be and I can zoom in and zoom out uh, very, very quickly. But it is nice to have big drawing sets so you get a good sense of what's going on. I like to have both, to be honest, as you can see, I've got some drawings behind me, but I also have the digital copies for those drawings so that I can review them. And as I'm a professor of construction management, I've built, you know, and been involved in hundreds of projects over my career and still in a consulting capacity um, working in that area. I like the advantage of both. And of course, with 3D models, I like that even better. When you have a 3D model of the terrain, you have basically an orthographic view, which is what this is. It's a flat, straight on orthographic view. Most of our actual issued for construction drawings, IFC, issued for construction drawings, are going to be in orthographic form, flat, straight on views, because we can put information on it and we can zoom in and zoom out. We can put measurements on it. We can put what we call elevations on it. And that makes it very easy then for us to lay things out from that. Uh, but models are very good for visualization purposes. As you'll see as we go further into the series, visualization plays a big role in being able to be excellent at constructing buildings and looking at a drawing and in your mind visualizing what's going on. So maybe that's what we should start to do. Let's visualize what's going on in this site plan here. So it's, as we zoom in here, well, before I actually zoom in, so I've just zoomed in, you can kind of see this is a corner house because you've got a street here and you've got a street there, right? 
Uh, you know, if I zoom out a little bit again, you should see that we've got a compass direction showing north. And of course, if we have a north direction, we could easily then figure out where is, you know, west and where is east, right? So we can get that and where is south. And so, of course, that is our north direction. They'll only ever give you north. So if you're directionally uh, challenged, as it's easy for some people to have that, uh, where they have a little bit of directional challenges. My daughter sometimes has trouble figuring out left and right hand, so she always does this for left. Uh, never eat shredded wheat going clockwise, or this spells we when you know the north. So just different ways that you can remember that. Uh, that can be uh, helpful for you under those uh, purposes. All right, and the other thing uh, that I wanted to uh, show you next is we've got this overall outline here. Uh, always look at the legend. So what does the legend tell us? Well, the legend, and I'll zoom in on this so you can see it better. Uh, the legend gives us a lot of information. It gives us a lot of symbols that will be used on the drawing. So these are important. They tell us what the symbols are. And they may also give us abbreviations. In my experience, you can't count on these being the same for all your projects. Now, I am I do know, you know, with this particular designer, Cassidy and Company, this is pretty much the symbols they'll use standard. So they've got everything They're You know, they're a very big uh, architectural uh, company and they do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes. And so they've standardized their processes. But that doesn't mean that a different designer doesn't have slightly different. You know, for the most part, they're similar, but my experience always look at the legend that's provided with the designer and the nice thing is if you're working on this subdivision you might be working on this subdivision building hundreds of homes over the next five ten years you'll get used to this standard but then if you go on a different subdivision and it's a different designer you've got to get used to um, their ways of doing things just the way it is uh, but uh, you've got abbreviations like finished floor elevation, top of basement wall, basement floor elevation. These are very important because they will tell you, for example, uh, if you're talking about underside of footing at the garage, underside of footing at the rear of the house, just underside of the footing at normal, normal elevation points. That's how far you have to excavate in relation to a benchmark and a benchmark is a standard elevation that is provided based on mean sea level coordinates and it's used because when we talk about drainage systems stormwater drainage systems drains from the house etc they have to have a fall to them so there has to be say, basically a gravity fall to them and everything has to be coordinated but you also need that so that you can reference and you can design out a subdivision with the grading to ensure the water is directed where you need it to go. So understanding elevations and visualizing elevations is very important. In fact, just the last few days, uh, I've been getting a lot of landscaping work uh, done on my house. And, you know, I was looking at the drawings and because uh, I had this excellent designer that did the, the landscape drawings, but Visually, I knew that uh, where it said one step, I knew there was going to be a requirement for two steps. And so when the landscape contractor was there, he said, no, it should be okay. And I go, no, I don't think so, because I can look at it and I can visualize it. And then so, of course, they took out their uh, instruments and their toll station and they were checking it. And they were, oh, you know what? You're right. It would be much better. We've got to put a second step because you want the water to fall away from the building. You don't want to go to all that trouble and have it not work. Well, you have no choice as a builder because the regulatory authorities are going to make sure that you have that fall away from the building. So uh, all of these symbols like elevations are important for those reasons. And that's why you also will see things like um, It'll say proposed elevation and existing elevation. In lesson three, I plan to use a commercial uh, drawing that we'll look at. So the upcoming lesson that I'll post in another week or so, uh, will have a uh, existing elevation and proposed elevations. This only has the proposed elevations, these particular drawings here, um, which is the finished grade elevations of when you complete the project. All right, but if it showed something like a, a number in brackets, that would be telling you, oh, wait a minute, that has an existing elevation. I don't think there's any on this drawing, but you never know. We might come across it as we go through it together. 
All right, so we'll go through these different elements where they are on the drawings or if they occur on the drawings. Uh, you also notice it says scale, NTS, not to scale. I'll spend another session on that coming up on scaling of drawings and what you have to know and what you have to be careful of. Uh, usually the date is important. You want to make sure you're working with the most current date. I've sort of whited that out because dates always change, uh, etc. And so these are important elements and you can sort of see usually there's a list of uh, drawings that have been listed for these requirements. And usually there'll be dates and you just want to have some way, this gets into more project management and site management, some way of organizing the drawings so you have a hierarchy that you know you're working with the most current set of drawing because you don't want to be doing something, if something's changed, you don't want to be doing something off the old drawings. Like I just said with my landscape contractor, well, if we discuss that we're going to put a second step and it gets redesigned and then somehow the communication to uh, the site leader gets misplaced, then they're going to start laying it out and excavating for one step instead of two steps. And then that's going to cause a lot of problems down the road. So currency of drawings is important. That's where a lot of the productivity softwares like Fieldwire, Bluebeam, um, Procore, uh, Plan Grid, these types of tools are very helpful because they can have a way of managing those documents and you know when you're looking at the most current one and it's live and dynamic static systems are like when you print something and it's like something changed and it wasn't printed that's a big problem so in construction we have to be mindful of that that we have systems in place all right getting back to our drawings here we have this plot plan it's on a corner lot so usually what i like to do is visualize what am i looking at here because you might be looking at that and saying i don't know what he's talking about here i don't exactly get uh what he's um, referring to right and so what i usually like to do is i usually like to highlight where the actual property is and where the actual house is so maybe you want to just freeze this for a minute or even just take a look at it before i talk about it and see if you can see the outline of the house where the garage is and where the property lines are that's always helpful for you to try to do this before i show you because then that gets you thinking on those things so i'll let you uh, pause that and take a good look at that if you will uh, it's always good when you figure these things out just remember that and so the property line is basically coming along here it's coming down it's whoops it's coming down this line here all right it's going to come down straight down this line all the way on the west side all right it's going to come across the back And then it's just going to go up that straight line there. So that's going to be basically the, oops, I went a little bit off there. It's going to come straight down that line over here, right? So that's the property line. Maybe I can get a little bit different color for the um, house. So let's try the house now. So this here is the edge of the house. It's coming around. It's coming here coming down here and this right here is the porch so there's like this nice porch on this house uh, that comes down you can sort of see the steps there uh, and it's coming down and around it's going down and it's going to go straight across here we got that there and it's just going to go straight up um, that line that's right beside the east property line right so you can sort of see how that encircles the building uh, a little bit awkward with my uh, mouse here but you can see where the house outline is and that's important to distinguish where is the house where is the property lines you got to get that stuff down right off the bat all right so here now you would have the full construction drawings but i can intuitively look at this and understand that this it says ufg for one, so there's a clue, um, underside of footing gar, which would mean underside of footing garage, right? So I can get that that means that the garage, and I'll zoom in maybe a little bit more for you, the garage is following this outline. Maybe I'll use a different color here. It's a little bit bright maybe, but it'll do the purpose. 
So the garage is doing this outline here, all right? And so, you know, I can overlap it here, I guess you could say, because that'll be where the garage door is at the front, all right? So the garage is contained in this area, part of the building, right? I'm not saying it's not part, it's, it's connected, it's uh, inside, um, but uh, it's good to know that because you can see here you've got a spot elevation. 112.21 you see a little x that's a spot elevation see a little x over here right and it says 111.96 so what that means is and we're in metric on this so this is looking at meters uh, being in canada it's meters yours might be you know it might be 110.5 feet and it might say 109.5 feet over here if it was in imperial same idea doesn't change that way so you've got 112.21 111.96 series of measurements doesn't matter it's just what you're using for your elevations generally speaking though it, when you're talking about site plans and surveys they're done in decimals as opposed to construction drawings which in metric they are done in obviously millimeters in imperial they're done in feet inches uh, fractions of an inch right so in canada even though our building code is in metric uh, usually residential drawings i would say uh, the majority of them are done in imperial and that's because we ship most of our goods uh, like plywood, uh, you know, drywall and stuff to the U.S. So we probably ship 10 times what we manufacture to the U.S. So we don't really just change them up because metric sheets are slightly different than imperial sheets. So it doesn't really matter. In this case, 112.21, that's the elevation here and 111.96. So that tells me that there's a difference of... 25 which really it's talking about a difference of 250 or 0.25 meters right so really it's talking about a difference of 25 there's about 25 millimeters in an inch 10 inches so there's a fall from basically the garage to the sidewalk of about 10 inches and that's 10 inches over this um, distance from here to here, right? So that's okay, that's fine, because uh, we wanna have the water run away from uh, the house. And that's why it's saying there's a 4.34% uh, slope. So if, what that would mean is that, the way I always look at it when it's given as a percentage, very easy to visualize. That's the first thing you wanna do. You wanna be able to visualize something like that so what you can think about from uh, that perspective is if you have 100 inches, right? It's 4.34 inches to nothing over 100 inches. That's the way to think about it. So, you know, you're thinking about uh, 8 foot 4 inches, 100 inches, right? 96 plus 4. Well, I got 4.34 inches down to nothing. So over that length of 100 inches, one side's 4.34, the other side is nothing. That gives you the slope. And now you understand what the ratio is and what the slope is. Because a lot of people I've found in construction, when you say a 2% slope or you say a 3% slope, they're like, yeah, an inch and a half, I get it. No, it's not an inch and a half. Not if it's 20 feet long or, or what have you. It is 2%, 2 percent, two inches on 100 inches. So if you've got two, 200 inches, Overall, it better be four inches because you're going two inches and two inches. So you have to think about it in those terms because it can make a big difference. Okay, so we have that uh, understanding of slope and we understand that these are spot elevations. Uh, they're based on a benchmark, uh, based on mean sea level, which it would be at basically um, zero. Uh, so mean sea level might be 500 miles away, right? Or more, depending where you're located. It might be just down the street if you're, if you're next to the ocean. But these are how those are calculated. And so, partly because the storm sewers and the sanitary sewers, a sanitary sewer is what takes the waste from the toilet. Storm sewers might be taking water from downspouts. It might be taking clean water from weeping tile. 
uh, that is going around the house, uh, etc. If it's you know if you have to have a waterproofing done because there's hydrostatic pressure on the foundation, water pressure, high water table, it may be uh, taking water away from the, around the foundation. Um, so that's clean water. This goes straight into the rivers and lakes. This goes to a treatment facility where it's treated before it gets uh, put back into um, the ecosystem. You'll notice here, this sort of track here, well, that's a sidewalk. So that's a sidewalk, and that's, that's what that's referring to. This would be a little bit of a boulevard here, probably some grass. This here is a hydro transformer. Right, so you got a hydro transformer over uh, here. So where is the symbol for that? Just so that we can see it. There it is, transformer, right? So that means your electricity is below ground. There's not hydro poles, and that's a transformer. This little cross pattern here is a street light. So that's referring to that. That's a street light. Sometimes the symbols don't 100% match what they show, but that's what that is in this case. This here is a catch basin. You know, the sewer grate that you think about, we call it a catch basin. Uh, it catches all the water that's flowing down the street and water that's flowing down the driveway would also go that to there and then it's redirected. Remember that these systems and drainage for a subdivision is designed on 100 year worst storms with a factor of safety built in so that it should be able to have the capacity not very frequently of flooding things, right? Uh, we have to be careful how we design for 100-year storms with uh, climate change and things like that. I think New York City's had three 100-year uh, storms in like 10 years, so that changes the calculations, right? All right, uh, setbacks. So this is 10.05 meters setback from the rear property line or you could say from the south property line, right? So this is the property line on the south side. Uh, we have a setback over uh, here of 3.87 meters. So you have to look very carefully um, from where it's going to. So you see the tick mark here and there's another tick mark there. So it's 3.87 meters from the property line here to this edge, right? So you have to be very careful where the slashes are and where it's going from and where it's going to um, from uh, that perspective so that you can um, accurately see what the measurements are. And then you see this, it's 13.58 meters from the back of the house, right, on the south side to the most extreme northerly part of the house. It's not stopping here, it's not stopping there, it's going straight through to here, right? So that, you gotta follow that. You gotta be very careful about where it's going to and from, right? And that's also where if you had, you know, if you wanted to scale it to confirm it, you could do checks. Um, that can be helpful. If you think that you've got something messed up or you're not 100% sure, that can always be helpful for that. I'll talk about scaling in another uh, example uh, video. Okay, so we've got those setbacks. We can see here very carefully, you see those two little slashes. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more for you so you can see a little bit better. So you see those two little slashes there? Well, that's 0.35 meters. So that's 350 millimeters, right? When you're showing something in meters and you want to convert to millimeters, you have to move it three places, one for decimeters, one for centimeters, and one for millimeters. So that's the same as saying 350 millimeters, right? So you're looking at about 14 inches or so there. And that is going from the property line here to the house. On this side, it's 1.25. When they can fit the measurement between, they will fit the measurement between. When they can't fit it, they'll put it to the side. So that's important to note as well. And you can see there's a spot elevation there, 112.27. There's a high point, it says 112.12, which is lower than this, but this is the high point for the swale. See these arrows? Those are swales, those are little curves you don't want the water to go against the house. You want it to go from the side of the house down to the middle. So from each house, it slopes down, right? And then it's redirected. 
Some of it is redirected from the high point in this direction. You see the arrow? Because that's going to take it out this way and eventually out to the sewer or catch basin. And then it's also going to take it out this way, down through the south side. And then you see a swale along the back of the lot. See, there's another house over here that you don't see. The water is also sloping back towards there. And it's going to redirect this way so that some will go out to the street. And it's going to redirect this way. And then you can see another redirection taking that that uh, area so there must be uh, a slope outward that way in this particular case so you follow the swales and you get a good sense of how the water is to flow and then you get the elevations and then when it's being laid out and graded uh, then basically they are checking to make sure that they're filling it in so that they're making sure that those slopes are going to take place so that's what's going on there we have here it says uh, the finished floor, 112.72. Top of basement wall, 112.48, right? Uh, we've got underside of footing is 110.02. And BF, what was BF? Basement floor elevation. Yeah, that's one because I usually don't pay too much attention to that one. It's really going to be based on where you're, uh, basically where your uh, top of footing is. Um, so underside of footing is 110.02. Uh, two. And so then from there, you know what? If I know the underside of my footing is 110.02 and I know my finished floor is 112.72, I can, with a section detail, I can start adding stuff up. And I'll show you that in another video as well, where you basically take the thickness of the footing, you take what the finished floor is supposed to be. That's going to give you the height of the wall. You're going to have a sill plate. You're going to have a floor joist. You're going to have uh, a subfloor and that would be your finished floor height. When it says finished floor, it means to the subfloor. It doesn't mean to the top of the ceramic tile or to hardwood flooring. Everything is to where you frame your structure to. Uh, typically, there's always these exceptions, but typically. All right, and we have here a sunken landing. So that means when you there, there's an opportunity here that you could have a door. It's not showing that, but if you see the actual drawings for the Whittington, there's an opportunity to have a door through from the garage. And usually you want to have a sunken landing, usually one riser, because that will, you know, sunken landing is usually one riser or two risers in the house, and then you've got one riser down to the garage floor. This is showing you basically... Um, you've got that uh, sunken landing and you've got that option for a doorway. Of course, they charge you extra if that's the case, um, but that's where that um, information is coming from. And so, and that if you look at this, this is what, 0.53 and this is 0.36. Uh, so it's a little bit less than 200 millimeters, probably a close to uh, seven inches or so, then that would be a typical step there. Uh, so that's what that is. Over here, you can see four risers. So that means you're going to have four steps down, and it says walkout deck. It doesn't show the deck in this particular drawing, but there would be a walkout deck. And then you would uh, have four risers down. Four risers, that's the vertical component of a stairs. The treads are the horizontal component. So if you have four risers, you got three treads. And actually, this is four risers. So that would be typically one riser from the house to the deck and then three risers down to the ground. These things sometimes they're, like I said, even with my own landscaping drawing, sometimes they're off by, you know, one riser, but it gives you a really, should be very close to that if everything's been done well and properly. And then there's other things that are symbols that you have to get used to, you know, like what is this and what is this? Well, this is showing a fence, right? And this is showing a gate. I guess in the subdivision, I think in this particular case, um, they would typically put in a uh, fence and, a, a, and here we have, and that's the direction that the gate would open. That would be what we call a right-hand gate. Um, I'll talk about that in another uh, episode on floor plans. But this is, what is that? Well, I don't know, let's take a look. So if I go down and I take a look, the only thing that's got this here is what they call a super mailbox. And that's what that is referring to. Being a corner house, there's a community mailbox. And usually it's bigger than that. It's usually a little bit longer than that. So I'm not quite sure why they showed it just uh, square like that. But that means that there's a bunch of boxes here. And that means the neighbors come up and they get their mail from here. 
if you live there, you might not think it's so super, everybody coming up uh, on your part of the, the lawn and that sort of stuff uh, to get it because it's not really your part. Uh, but um, that's where um, that would be located for that reason. All right. Uh, and this here is a sidewalk that goes around to the front of the porch. And these are posts that will support the roof over the porch uh, that is coming into play. We can see the side yard setbacks. So this would be from the west side of the property line. And so this is 3.65 meters um, to here. This is 2.15 to the edge of the step uh, that's coming um, down. So you can see it's giving you the different, you've got setbacks from this side, from this side, from the front, from the back. Uh, you've got the overall length of the building at its longest point from outside to outside. You've got the width of the building with, at its widest point. So that's from here. So look where the extension line is. This is an extension line. This is a dimension line. And look where it goes to. It goes to over here, right? So we're going from there to there, across here, 11.2 meters. It's not going to the edge here, right? This little point is telling you four risers down, right? You got one, two, three risers. And like I said, the fourth riser is from the floor to the porch, and then you're going down three risers from the porch. That's where you're looking at it. That's how you need to think about it. All this stuff ties in uh, together, right? It's very important. You don't want to end up with the first floor that is lower than the ground outside. I'm not saying that never happens, but it's definitely not ideal. It's not what you want to have uh, happen. There's usually some sort of real unusual circumstance going on with the grading uh, in that particular example. But you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, you want to make sure that the first floor is higher than where the grade is. It doesn't have to be hugely higher, but as long as it's higher, um, you know, there's barrier free access that comes into design, making sure that the elderly can easily access things. Less risers, like if it's a bungalow in those cases, is more fundamentally important. Um, but still, we want to be up a little bit. We can have a ramp, uh, a, you know, a low slope ramp uh, for barrier free access. All right, so I think that's pretty much what I wanted to get across uh, in this particular uh, video. We will have uh, upcoming ones more on this. We will revisit this because it does take a little bit of practice to get used to looking at these drawings and understanding what is going on. But, you know, we went from something that's just a bunch of lines to getting a good understanding of, you know, there's two streets here, it's a corner lot. This will be the actual curb that goes around. There's a sidewalk, probably a good five foot uh, wide sidewalk or six foot wide sidewalk. Here's a fairly narrow sidewalk from going around the house, probably like 30 inches or so that's going around uh, to the front uh, door. Here's the garage. Uh, these are spot elevations. This is a high point over here. This is a swale that's going in each direction. If you want to visualize swales and some of the other things a little bit better, go back and look at my lesson one. It should pop up. I'm going to put a reference to it on the pop-up coming up shortly. Uh, and uh, look at my playlist. And please uh, subscribe as we go through this and you learn more about reading construction drawings from housing and small buildings. And the book has literally hundreds and hundreds of questions and that's how you practice and you see how you're doing you look at the answers and that sort of thing so i hope this has been helpful for you uh, i'm tom stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time and don't forget to leave a comment and to subscribe bye for now